Hello, welcome back to Football Now, where we'll be giving you all of our previews for the fixed Premier League fixtures this weekend, running you through the betting odds and giving our own predictions as well. Before we get into today's video, I want to remind everyone of the ongoing competition we've got here at Football Now. We can win a football shirt of your own choice by subscribing to the channel, leaving a comment in all of the videos, not just this one, the ones we've done before and the ones we will do in the future on the road to 100 subscribers. As you can see, there, our Twitter handle at Football Now underscore one as well. That's where the decision will be announced. We are three quarters of the way there now. So in the near future, we will be hitting that uh, 100 mark. So good luck to everyone. The more involved you get, the more likely you are to be pulled out as the winner. As you can see, this video will be focusing on Newcastle hosting Arsenal. Big game uh, for Connor, especially half five on Saturday in the North East. Before we do get into the uh, the actual game itself, Connor, do you want to run us through the betting odds? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a tough one to call, isn't it? I mean, Arsenal, you know, courtesy of, of being one of the challenges in the Premier League, do kick off as slight favourites, um, but 15 to 8, 13 to 8. I mean, there's really, really nothing in it. You know, 5 to 2 as well. It's, you know, it's only just above 2 to 1. So it's a very, very difficult game to predict. Um, I mean, you can eat you know, a bit like almost the Everton one. You can, you can really put any, any result on the table there. And, and be comfortable with it. Arsenal, you know, they've still not lost in the Premier League yet. Um, both North London sides are the only two sides left in the Premier League to, to have lost the game. Um, Newcastle, again, I, I almost feel like it's a bit of a false position for Newcastle because they are sixth, but I think, you know, they, they had a they had a period in, in the middle of the season where I think they lost three games on the spin and that, that's what's really dragged them down. So they, I think they have been player then that's playing better than that sixth position. Although saying that, the teams above them, Aston Villa, Liverpool, you know, they've all been having fantastic seasons as well. It's a really, really congested, you know, top six this season. I think really in any four of those could make it into the top four at the end of the season. It's very, very difficult to predict. But certainly Newcastle are finding a bit of form. They'll be buoyed after that League Cup performance last night against Manchester United. 3 0 at Old Trafford. Um, before that, it was it was two all against Wolves, but like we said, Wolves have been playing well, starting to find a bit of form. Um, probably fortunate not to lose that game as well, to be honest, because there was a dubious penalty uh, awarded to Newcastle, and also um, Pedro Neto was in a good position, I think, to, to score, and then he just pulled up with his hamstring as well. Um, Arsenal. Um, few games before now, 2 till against Chelsea, which in hindsight was a good point because it was their worst performance of the season, went 2-0 down and pulled it out of the fight to rescue a point. But, you know, last time out we said that, you know, I, th I think we needed Arsenal to put down a bit of a statement where not in terms of getting the three points, but in terms of just, you know, getting quite a few goals. And we, we saw that um, Eddie Nketi has been brought back in because Jesus is out injured at the moment and he scored a hat-trick. Uh, a really, really, really good hat trick as well. You know, it was a proper striker's hat trick. You know, all you know, there was one goal from from distance, and then the um, there was the first goal was a fantastic touch, and then the second goal was just a real poacher's effort from Eddie and Ketty. And that's exactly what we need. You know, he's never going to be the main main man, but when you've got that quality, who who can come in when your main main starter is out um, to, to do a job, it's it's really, really good thing, and it's. You know, we are going to go on to win the league or do anything this season. It's it's a player like that is going to be really, really important. But yeah, it it it, it will be tough. And I was looking at at the previous fixtures between these two sides. Bizarrely, you need to go back eleven fixtures before you find a game between these two where both teams have scored. So you know, it, it's it's either been a nil nil draw or the winners kept a clean sheet. Which you know, make it out what you will. Maybe if you are going to back a winner, maybe back them to win to nil to, to get a few more pounds in your pocket. But yeah, I think it's good. It's a really difficult game to call. And I think both teams actually will be thinking that they can win this. Yeah, definitely. Um, before we get into the recent form you've mentioned now, I'm looking at the injuries as well. Uh, I think both sides have got um, play, big players ruled out. Elliot Anderson, Harvey Barnes, Sven Botman, Alexander Isak, um, Jacob Murphy and obviously Tenali um, for Newcastle is suspended. Uh, Matt Target also has questions over whether he will return for Arsenal. You mentioned Jesus out, um, party, Emil Smith Rowe, and obviously the, the injury to Julian Timber as well, uh, ongoing. So big names ruled out, um, for both. You mentioned the, 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 the 
draw away at Wolves last time out in the league for Newcastle. Um, no doubt they'll be buoyed by the 3 0 away win at Old Trafford last night in the cup. Completely played Man United off the park. Obviously, it's a struggling Man United right now, but to go to Old Trafford and win by three goals to nil, I think it's a you know it's a big win for any side. And you mentioned you know early on in the the season they did have that little run, didn't they? Newcastle, where you, you thought, oh, you know, are they getting pulled back down to reality? But their response has then been absolutely fantastic. You know, from the eight nil away win to Sheffield United. Um, Beating City in the cup, a big win against PSG in the cup as well. Um, at home, especially, I think they're going to be a really, really tough team um, to beat for uh, for Newcastle. I think uh, you probably agree this is another big test for Arsenal um, this weekend. You yeah, know, they're, they're going to be a few tougher fixtures than Newcastle away right now. They're really riding the crest um, of a wave. You mentioned as well Arsenal's big win last time out. Sheffield United, obviously sitting at the bottom of the table, but the, the goals from Enketia. I think there's, there's been a few question marks, hasn't there, over Arsenal, whether you've got the out-and-out goal scorer to score the big goals to you when, when the games are tight. So it's always encouraging when a striker, particularly one who's not always finding himself in the start and 11, comes in and grabs a few fewer as well. You mentioned the nature of the goals um, as well. I'm sure Arteta will be disappointed by the loss to West Ham last night in the Cup. But ultimately... I think of- I promise you has forgotten about that either. Yeah, league. Yeah, this is the league. You know, I, I know the league cup is one of those things where you know it doesn't really matter when you're out, but yeah, it, it, it doesn't. It's it, it's just it's fixture congestion. It, it really, really is. I mean, Arsenal have been prioritised in so long. Arsenal have never won it. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I think you could benefit almost from having the break while other teams are, uh, are awesome. still involved. It's one of them. It's a hit and hit and think missing. If you're in it, great. It's a chance of a trophy. But if not, it's hardly the end of the world. Um, especially if you're pushing for the bigger trophies like Arsenal are hoping to get involved um, with uh, this season. The um, still. Yeah, and the Invincibles, like you've mentioned, the still uh, still undefeated, so you never know the repeat of the Invincibles this time around. Um, we've mentioned uh, as well the levels that have been set towards that end of the table um, by Man City, particularly, you know, you're almost feeling as though you need to win every single game just to keep pace, even yeah. though you know, they're off in third place right now. So, you had a good... I think you beat them away last season, though, didn't you? I think it was a real good performance. Yeah, yeah right, right, right at the end of the season. But, you know, to, to be honest with you, even before Newcastle was was taken over by the uh, the, the Saudis, when it was still Mike Ashley and when, when they were struggling towards the bottom end of the table, it was still a really, really tough place to go. St. James's Park has always been hard to go. So... um this is going to sound stupid, but the clocks go back and makes it harder because Newcastle under the lights is just a harder place to go. It's going to be dark now. That's my excuse if we lose. It was dark. We should have played before the clocks went back. Starting to sound like Jurgen Klopp. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had to get that in before you did. Uh, having said all that, we give our predictions. I'll go first. I'm going to back Arsenal to get the three points. But like you said, I think either way, any result wouldn't be a massive surprise. I'm going to go for a 2-1 away win um, for Arsenal, I think. Um, yeah, I feel like, like we've said, every point counts at the minute now. So I think you almost need to win it, as ridiculous as that sounds. Just because we know, you know, you assume that heading into this game, Man City will have won at three o'clock and piling that pressure on. Um, what's your prediction, Connor? Yeah, I mean, I'm sort of torn in this one because I do want to try and get ahead on the old prediction league. So that would that that tells me I should do something different. But uh, I also can't back Arsenal not to win. I even, with no confidence, backed them to beat Man City. That turned out well. Um, I'm thinking two 0 or one 0 I'm I'm going to go with two 0 I think. Um, I'm thinking too, no, just because of that stat I mentioned earlier. You know, both teams haven't scored in this fixture in, in 11 games now. And I just think that, you know, I know we lost 3 1 last time out to West Ham in the league, but, you know, m- mentally, that, that's not where our mind is at. It's, it is about the Premier League, but it's good. You know, this is a, this is a real, real test. If we can come through this, we, we'd be getting three points on the board. You know, that, that tells me a lot about, about Arsenal, you know, because this is one of the toughest places you can go to in the Premier League and it's always been that as well absolutely um, we've got our own head-to-head predictor there as Connor's alluded to 
I've taken the lead right now. He's desperate to claw that gap back. You get three points for the correct scoreline and one for the correct result. Uh, let us know how you fare with your predictions this weekend, not just this game, but the other nine fixtures, which we will be previewing um, on the channel. Obviously, the more you comment as well, the more likely you are to be pulled out as the winner of the competition. I mentioned at the start on our road to 100 subscribers. Subscribe to the channel. Get involved in the comment section. Uh, good luck to those who do uh, partake in the competition. You'll find the decision and the announcement on our Twitter at footballnow underscore one, which we hit 100 subscribers. That concludes our fixtures for Newcastle versus Arsenal, the final game on Saturday. I believe we're on to the Sunday fixtures now. You'll find those videos over on the channel and we'll see you there.